Welcome into the Chiefs Report. I'm your host, Harrison Graham. Final mock draft time. And yes, there are trades in today's mock draft as we sit just a couple of days away from the 2020 NFL Draft. Quick reminder of the Chiefs' current draft picks. One pick in each of the first five rounds. 32, 63, 96 overall, 138, and 177. The Chiefs do not have a pick in the sixth or seventh rounds as we sit right now. These are the biggest needs, in my opinion. Cornerback and linebacker, 1A, 1B. I think you can go either way there. Uh, that is up to your opinion. I would get lean corner slightly because I think it's more important on Steve Spagnuolo's defense, but that is the only reason. And interior offensive line, I think, is a need. Edge rusher, wide receiver, running back as well would be some secondary needs for the Kansas City Chiefs. So before we get into this mock draft, what is your trust level in Chiefs general manager Brett Beach? Scale it from 1 to 10, 1 being you'd rather have me draft the Kansas City Chiefs, or 10 being you think he's the best GM of all time. He's, you know, he, he's Ozzie Newsom or, you know, whoever. Uh, I, 8 or 9, I, I'm pretty confident. I trust him. I think he will do a good job. He's proven to do a good job in the past. So first pick, pick number 32 in round one. <laughs> no trade alert. I trade down from round one to, uh, with the Miami Dolphins, picking up the number 39 overall pick and a fourth round pick in the process. This trade works. It's an equal trade. Miami moves up to the number 32 overall pick. The reason I traded down is there were several players left that I was comfortable taking at 32, which meant I thought at least one of these guys would fall to me at 39. So I took a bit of a chance. Denzel Mims was on the board, Patrick Queen, Christian Fulton, Jeff Gladney, and Xavier McKinney. All those players, especially those last four, Mims, I don't know if I want to take a receiver in round one, but those other four players, I would take them at 32, which means I like my chances of getting them at 39. So would you do this trade? Just to recap again, the Chiefs get number 39 overall and number 141 overall by sending number 32 overall to the Miami Dolphins. Remember, Kansas City only has five draft picks, so let's get you an extra pick. Type Y for yes, type in for no. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments section. And one of them fell, Jeff Gladney. I get him at number 39. I think this is excellent value for the cornerback out of TCU. I actually think he'll probably slide into round one. So to get him at 39 is very good value. Physical player, plays bigger than his size. He can play nickel. He can play outside. He takes pride in pressing and playing man-to-man -man coverage. We've talked about him a couple of times. I like his game a lot. And with Kendall Fuller gone, I actually think he can plug in as your nickel corner in year one and be that guy for a while with the versatility to slide outside as well. His 26 pass breakups the past two seasons led college football, including 14 in 2019. Teams did not throw his way, and when they did, he did not give up completion. So I like this pick. I think it's good value to trade down and still get a first-round type of player in Jeff Gladney. I think that is really, really good. Look at the depth chart. I think you plug him in for Rashad Fenton at the nickel, and uh, Fenton, it kind of becomes that, you know, do-it-all rotation defensive back play safety, he can play outside corner, he can play nickel. I think Gladney slides into that nickel back in year one if the Chiefs do take him. Some other players on the board when I took, yeah, Patrick Queen, he was still there. It was a tough decision. I went with cornerback. Uh, Xavier McKinney was still on the board as well. K.J. Hamler, Isaiah Wilson, the Georgia offensive tackle, and then J.K. Dobbins, the Ohio State running back. So like I said, it was a tough decision between Jeff Gladney and Patrick Queen. So I'll decide, or I'll let you guys decide. I went with Gladney, type G for Gladney, type Q for Queen. Let me know who you would pick at this spot in the NFL draft. While that might be a tough question, this should be a no-brainer. Get yourself a Chiefs cornhole bag set. It doesn't come with the boards, but you get these sweet bags uh, of the red and the yellow. You got the Super Bowl champion logo on one side. You got the Chiefs logo on the other side. Pretty sweet deal. They're on sale right now. Chatsports.com slash Chiefs corn is the link. You can check the comments. You can check the description. Get this sweet cornhole set. We all need some positivity in our lives. Go ahead and order this today. All right, we got another trade here. I'm trading down from 63. I'm trade happy today here on the Chiefs report. So I trade down from 63 to Denver and pick up two of their set, uh, third round picks, 83 and 95. I also send uh, number 138 to Denver in the process. So I dish out a second and a fourth, and I get two thirds in the process. Pretty even trade here. You look at the trade charts. This one works pretty evenly. Uh, so some players on the board at 63 had I picked J.K. Dobbins, 
tempting, but it's just not a big enough need for me. Michael Pittman Jr., Kyle Duggar, the safety out of Lenore Ryan, Neville Gallimore, and then Matt Hennessy, the interior offensive lineman out of Temple. Some good options there, but I thought trading down to get uh, you know a couple of third-round picks made more sense for me. So who do you think wins this trade? Chiefs get two-thirds, Denver gets a second and a fourth. KC or Denver, go ahead, type your votes down in the comment section. I think it's an even trade with the Broncos having multiple thirds. It makes sense for them to move up with the Chiefs and not having a ton of picks. makes sense to move down and get some better value in the third round. Uh, I'm typing KC, but I think it's very close in the end. And it worked out for me because I get Brandon Ayuk at number 83 overall in the third round. Some mocks have him sneaking into round one. So I'd be shocked if he fell this low, but in this particular uh, mock draft, he did. So I think this is excellent value. He's the exact type of receiver the Chiefs like. Get him the ball in space, and he'll make things happen after the catch. Explosive player. He averaged over 18 yards per catch his senior season at Arizona State. Yeah, that is yak, baby. Yards after catch. 65 grabs, almost 1,200 yards. Like I said, the 18.3 there, eight touchdowns with average quarterback at er, er, quarterback play at ASU. I like Ayuk a lot. I think he's a top 60 prospect, so getting him at 83 overall is really good value. Not a ton of room this year on the depth chart, but Sammy Watkins is in the last year of his deal. Demarcus Robinson is as well. So really, in 2021, Hardman and Ayuk can be your number two and number three receiver, and then you're set for a while with three speedsters of Hill, Hardman, and Ayuk. Some other players on the board at number 83 overall, Jordan Elliott, the defensive tackle out of Missouri. Donovan Peoples-Jones, uh, the receiver out of Michigan. Chase Claypool was there as well. I opted to go for more speed. Damon Arnett, the corner out of Ohio State. Intriguing, but I already took a corner. And Jeff Gladney, and then Jonathan Bernard, the edge out of Florida. So grade the pick for me, A, B, C, D, or F. Brandon Ayuk in the middle of late of the third round. A, B, C, D, or F. I think it's an A minus. It's an A. It's really good value. Is it a major need? No. Is he going to help? Absolutely, especially starting in 2021. I want to remind you guys to get subscribed to the channel, youtube.com slash Chiefs TV. Type sub if you've already subscribed. I'm sure there will be a lot of sub comments down in the comment section. But if you haven't, go ahead and hit that red sub button. We got videos, several videos going out per week. If we get more subs, that means more videos. So go ahead and subscribe and turn on notifications. All right, next pick here, uh, round three, pick number 95. Got this in the Broncos trade as well. Willie Gay Jr. This is a controversial pick, to say the least. Look, I think he's a top 60, 65 player. Uh, the problem is he comes with uh, several red flags, which is uh, why he falls uh, to maybe even round four in the real NFL draft. Character concerns are legitimate, but he's a really good player. So the Chiefs being where they are with not a ton of major needs, it might be worth a bit of a risk. He got suspended eight games as a part of an academic scandal at Mississippi State when he cheated on a test. He was ejected from the Egg Bowl a couple of years ago. Uh, it gets feisty between Ole Miss and the Mississippi State. He had an altercation with a teammate in which his teammate ended up with a broken bone. This guy has issues, but if his head screwed on straight, pick number 95, uh, it might be worth the risk. The Chiefs linebacking core is not great. I like their front four. I think they get another corner in their secondary. They're good there as well. Hitchens and Damian Wilson are okay. Usually they, they run nickel anyway, so they don't have three linebackers. But Ben Neiman's not a starter. Dorian O'Daniel hasn't developed. They need help at the linebacker position. Give me Willie Gay Jr. late in the third round. Take a chance, Kansas City. I think it's certainly worth a pick. And then also, how about another Mississippi State player? Back-to-back -back picks here. Cameron Dantzler at number 96 overall. Mel Kuyper actually mocked him in his last mock in the second round of the Chiefs at number 63. So this is good value. You get your nickelback type of player in Gladney, who, who's more versatile. Dantzler can only play outside, I think. 6'2", uh, has the size for it. Didn't run well at the combine, so his stock has dipped a, a bit. But the tape doesn't lie. He's a good player. I think he can be an outside corner. With Breland back on a one-year deal, I think he's a backup this year. And then he's your number two corner starting in 2021 on the outside, along with, you know, Gladney and uh, Traverius Ward. I think that's a good cornerback unit moving forward. So I like these two Mississippi State players. Uh, you know, obviously Gay is a risky pick. Dancer is more of a safe pick. But overall, I think it is good value. Some other players on the board, uh, when I took these two players, Troy Pride Jr., the corner out of Notre Dame, he's kind of strictly a nickel guy. I didn't really want to go that route since I think Gladney probably profiles best as a nickel. Ben Barch, the offensive lineman out of St. John's. Bryson Hopkins, the Purdue tight end. Cam Akers, you know, Benjamin, a couple of productive running backs 
at Florida State and Arizona State, respectively. Who's the better pick? Which Mississippi State player is better? Type LB, the linebacker, Willie Gay out of Mississippi State. Type CB, the cornerback out of Mississippi State, Cameron Dantzler. You know, corner, linebacker, they're both major needs. This would be the second corner for the Chiefs in this draft. Uh, Gay's got higher upside, but I think Dantzler is probably the safer pick, so I would expect more CBs down in the comments section. All right, guys, I want to remind you, uh, we are going to have you covered of the entire NFL draft on our main Chat Sports YouTube channel, all seven rounds starting this Thursday night. So go ahead and subscribe to that channel, youtube.com slash chat sports TV, all seven rounds, all 254 picks, whatever it is. Tom Downey, our lead draft analyst, Mitchell Renz and myself will have you guys covered, including our entire production team behind the scenes as well. We're going to bring you the best draft coverage on the internet. We were the most viewed channel last year on all digital platforms. We plan to do that again this year. And again, we will break down every single draft pick. All right, let's keep this mock draft rolling. Uh, ben Bredesen in round four at pick number 141. Interior offensive line, I like this value. I think he's a top 120 player. Uh, so to get him on the back end of round four, good value, experienced player in the Big Ten, 46 career starts at left guard. Really good run blocker, has great power. Not as good of a pass protection uh, offensive lineman, but good enough. Uh, not the best athlete, but I, you know, I love his experience. I like his leadership. This interior needs a little bit of help. I still think that Duvernay Tardif could be a post June one cut. So then you've got Bredesen in there to plug in. Andrew Wiley, a little bit shaky at times last year as well. You could certainly use some competition at the guard position. Some other players on the board when I made this selection have been Bredesen, A.J. Dillon, the Boston College running back, Harrison Hand, the Temple quarterback, K.J. Hill, the wide receiver out of Ohio State, another receiver out of Oregon State, uh, Isaiah Hodgins, and then Evan Weaver, the linebacker out of Cal. I opted to go offensive line with Ben Bredesen. Now, I went on the interior. I went with a guard. What do you think the bigger need on this offensive line is? I think it's obvious. Type OT for tackle, type OG for guard. I think you're set at tackle for now. You got uh, two of the better ones in the NFL, in Schwartz and Eric Fisher, although Fisher got a view from the Super Bowl. But neither here nor there. You're set at tackle. I think it's OG for guard. But if you disagree, go ahead and type OT. All right, last pick here. I still didn't end up with a sixth or seventh round pick in this Chiefs mock draft with trades, but I love this selection. Anthony Jennings, the edge rusher out of Alabama. Round five, really good value. He's a good pass rusher. The problem is he's bad against the run, like really bad. That is not his game at all. You want him to be a rotational pass rusher that you say blitz the quarterback. That's all you want Anthony Jennings to do. If he's in on rundowns, that is a mistake by a coaching staff, at least at this point. Maybe he develops, becomes better in that area, but for me, he is strictly a pass rusher at this point. That's why he's probably going to fall to the fourth or fifth round. Eight sacks last year, 13 tackles for loss. Sure, the 83 tackles, but a lot of those are, you know, several yards downfield. He is not a good run defender to say the least. But if he's part of your rotation, you know, can he be better than Breland Speaks? I kind of think he can. Speaks has not proven much uh, in the young part of his career. He was banged up last year, so not super fair. Uh, but I like Jennings' potential as a pass rusher. This defensive line's in pretty good shape. You put him as a part of that rotation coming off the edge with passing yo and speaks, you're going to be feeling pretty good about that. Some other options, when I took uh, Anthony Jennings, Evan Weaver was still on the board, James Prochet, LaMichael Pirine, uh, Anthony Gordon, the quarterback out of Wazoo. I don't think the Chiefs would draft a backup quarterback. And then Antoine Brooks Jr., the safety out of Maryland. So there it is. Grade my Chiefs mock draft 3.0. Had a couple of trades. I'll recap the picks in just a moment. But go ahead and grade it A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know how you think I did. I'll give myself a solid B+. Plus. Thought it was good. Thought the trades worked out pretty well in my favor, picking up a couple of key pieces. So A, B, C, D, or F. Uh, let me know what you think about my mock draft. And to recap it here, here were my first three picks. Jeff Gladney, uh, I traded down, got him at number 39 overall. I think it's really good value. The cornerback out of TCU. Brandon Ayuk. He was out of a trade as well. Got him in round three. Willie Gay Jr., the linebacker out of Mississippi State at pick number 95. Cameron Dantzler with another Mississippi State player back-to-back -back there, the corner out of Mississippi State. Ben Bredesen, the offensive lineman out of Michigan. I think he could start as a guard right away. And then Anthony Jennings, the Alabama edge rusher. I think he can be a part of a rotation from day one. So that is my Chiefs mock draft 3.0, my final mock draft before the draft gets going on Thursday night.